In this video lecture, I'm going to talk you through part B of the visual arts assignment. So this is just some information to help you um, ensure that there is a streamlined process for submission <clears throat> and very importantly, a streamlined uh, a process uh, in terms of um, just developing your artwork and your artist statement. So. For part B, so I'll just go back a step, you'll remember that in the assignment task you've got part A and part B. So part A is sort of like the main thrust where you've got um, the refinement of, of three activities, which I will talk about in part C of the lecture. But for part B, this is where you are um, developing and refining an, uh, your own artwork, so very much under that umbrella of teacher as artist, and um, then you're submitting that along with an artist statement. So in part B, you submit an artwork, which is 30 by centimetres by 30 centimetres if it's two-dimensional, or 30 by 30 by 30 centimetres if it's three-dimensional. And that artwork is submitted in your workshop. So if you're in the Wednesday 10 a.m. workshop, that is when you bring your artwork in, um, and that is when you present. And when you're presenting, you're presenting for two minutes, and you'll have your artwork on the wall, beside you and you will then deliver your artist statement which is a two minute long oral delivery um, in which you are um, talking about the making and responding aspects of your process when you are creating the artwork. Now it is really important that you attend to the size restrictions or requirements um, of this particular task. So it is a requirement that that of, that we that you submit using that that size for various different reasons, um, but also you know it is part of the assessment task, and so um, I do expect you to um, to make sure that you do that correctly. And if you don't, your assignment won't be marked. Okay, so make sure that it is thirty centimeters by thirty centimeters or thirty centimeters cubed if it's a if it's a three dimensional artwork, um, and um, in ensuring that you are um, partaking collegially in this activity um, and attending to the, the various requirements. So when you come to submit um, for the actual assessment, so you've already given your oral presentation in your workshop and um, I'll be in attendance for all of them as and your tutor will be there for um, your particular workshop. And um, then your, your grade and your mark and your feedback are given to you um, at a later date. But once you have done that particular presentation, you then need to um, submit it on to um, turn it in. So your, as you will see in the unit outline, your, um, your transcript uh, needs to be submitted at the start of your particular workshop. Okay. And you do that by going into the Group A Visual Arts Assignment Turnitin Dropbox in the assessment module on Leo. And you'll see there are two sections, there's part A and part B. For the part B, you need to submit it to the part that is called part B, artist statement including artwork. And the reason why you need to put it into that one is obviously part B goes into part B, but also there's a very specific marking structure for part B and part A. And if you put your part B into the part A section, um, it won't mark correctly and indeed it won't be marked. Okay, so I spent a significant amount of time at the end of the first um, iteration of this, this task. Um, downloading and deleting and re-uploading assignments and it's not my job to do that so this is a this is a streamlined version compared to the first the first um, groups um, submission process and there's actually no no excuse for getting it wrong so make sure you put part B into the part B um, component also remember just going back one that the transcript of your artist statement needs to be the transcript that you read out for your um, oral presentation and it needs to include a reproduction of your artwork. So that's not two separate separate documents. You've got your, your document that you're submitting as your transcript and embedded into that is um, a good reproduction of your artwork. Okay. Without that, again, it won't be marked. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, to come across as being so dictatorial about this, but it is not my job to be chasing people um, if assignments haven't been 
submitted properly. So make sure that you are, when you come to submit it via the Dropbox, that you're doing it via the Part B section, and also that you're in your transcript. Um, it has, it includes a copy of your um, of your artwork. So what I'd like you to think about with this, okay, when you're when you're delivering your um, your statement or you're constructing your statement, is that if I just go to the last slide here. I so said, this is your opportunity to evidence your emerging knowledge of the visual arts as a way of forming knowledge, asking questions, and challenging existing frames of reference. Part A is your opportunity to explore curriculum, okay? So in this part B, this is you as teacher, as artist. And what I really want to see is that you're, you're beginning to grapple with how the visual arts are more than a little bit of painting on a Friday afternoon, that they are actually a way of knowing, a way of understanding, and a way of exploring the world. So the various artists that you've been introduced to um, over the course of the semester in the lectures, um, they all have a particular, kind of, particular kind of practice. They're all trying to explore something and find meaning in something and present to their audience um, the way that they're thinking and, and, and the way that they, un they understand the world. Now, I'm not expecting um, you know, a great change in practice over the six weeks, but I certainly am wanting to see that you are making reference to the, the, um, the requirements of, of the task, which will allow you to, to develop that kind of um, understanding of, of the visual arts. So within your statement, um, there needs to be some mention of the making component and some mention of the responding component. And I would I would probably assume that the first thing that you're going to be talking about is the responding component. So where does your art your artwork come from? What has inspired you? Who are the artists that have inspired you? And, and what are the elements of the pra their practice that have inspired you? Then there's going to be the component where you're talking about the making. So how did I actually make this artwork? So what are the techniques? What are the materials? What are the skills that I that I needed to apply in order for this artwork to come to life? Within both the responding and the making section, I want to listen. I want to be able to hear um, how you're talking about techniques, and also want to hear about the terminology, so the elements and the principles, some of the conventions of art. Um, you know, go back to to the first couple of workshops where we we began to mention those, and then see how you can actually start to embed you know, line, form, shape, colour, etc. into what you're talking about in a realistic way. If you just tack it on the end of your statement because you think it's going to sound okay, it actually won't work. So it really, you really do need to examine what you've done in your um, art making process. Also talk about meanings in your art. So what you know, how what does this artwork mean to you? What are you what's the message you're trying to convey? What what is something that has ignited you and interested you? And finally, and very importantly, construct your your statement around the conceptual framework. So I want to be hearing about the artist, i.e. you. I want to be hearing about the artwork. I want to be hearing about the subject matter or, or world. So those two things are interchangeable. And I also want to be hearing about um, how this impacts on the audience. And with the audience, really think about what you want the audience to be engaging with. What, what do you think they might take away from, from your artwork? So this is quite complex thinking and it's quite um, an intense way of, of negotiating and understanding the art world. And I'm well aware that this is, you know, six weeks worth of work. But the reason why I want you to do this now is that when you move into EDAR 342 next semester, where you're going to be engaging in media arts, it's going to be a bit more intense. OK, and we're going to expect you to come into that unit with this knowledge from EDAR 241. And so the art making and um, the, the processes that you're going to engage students in are going to be more intense, more in depth, um, and more focused on, on what it is to operate within, within a visual world. So good luck with your development of part B. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your artworks over the next two days. And um, I'll put up a part C of this on uh, Wednesday morning, where I'm talking about some of the, the things you might want to think about as you're attending to um, part A of the um, assignment, so the three activities, which of course is going to be due on um, next Monday. So in Monday, on Monday of week 13. I'll see you all during the next, the next few days.